All right, ladies and gentlemen, next problem we're going to work on, uh, functions f of x, g of x. We've got f of x equals 5 minus x plus 1 quantity squared divided by 3. Again, I apologize, not enough focus on this camera. And uh, g of x, which is 2x plus 3. And we want to find the inverse of x, f of x, the inverse of g of x, and then we're going to do that composition of functions f of g of x. Now, first step in our first one, Ignore the f of x and just say y. y equals 5 minus x plus 1 squared over 3. And what we have to do is switch the x's and the y's. So that way we're starting out with x equals 5 minus y plus 1 squared over 3. And I'm going to, because I want to find the inverse of g of x, I'm just going to rewrite that one also. Again, ignore the g of x and just think of it as y equals 2x plus 3. And we're going to switch around the x and the y term from that one. So x equals 2y plus 3. I'm going to put a little squiggly to keep my work separate so you know we've got the f inverse and the g inverse going on here. Um, first things first here, 5 is kind of hanging out by itself, so why don't we bring him over? Minus 5, minus 5. So x minus 5 equals negative y plus 1 squared divided by 3. Now, I don't necessarily like this negative out in front here, at least of the y, because that's what I'm trying to get. So if I multiply everything by negative 1, that'll kind of fix that problem right away. Uh, next thing we've got going on that's being done to y is that we're dividing by 3. So to undo that, we want to multiply both sides by 3. So we have 3 times negative x plus 5. Negative 3x plus 15 when I distribute, equaling, and then okay, and the point over here is to get those 3s to cancel. So we've got y plus 1 quantity squared. And you can see slowly but surely we're going to chip away at the stuff that's attached to y so that we can get this into y equals uh, equation. Now from here, next thing that's being done is we're squaring, so we want to do the square root on both sides. Square and square root cancel out. Can't forget about plus or minus. Looks like it's going to be a sleeping parabola, so make sure you have the top and bottom of it. Let me rewrite this. Plus or minus the square root of negative 3x plus 15 equals y plus 1. And now you can see the last step that we have to do is just subtract 1 from both sides, and that's going to give us the equation plus 15 minus 1 which equals f, and I'll put the f of x back in there now, but the f inverse of x, and it equals that. Now the way you can test it is by taking and plugging this function into the calculator, plugging this original function, 5 minus, uh, well, let me go back up here, 5 minus x squared plus 1, or x plus 1 quantity squared over 3, and then see if it does that little trick where in your window screen, you can imagine having that line f, excuse me, y equals x, and then the function does it this way, the function does it this way, and then you can see that that line y equals x is that like reflection line between the two functions. Um, it might be a lot easier to see with this one, so we might try that. Over here, think about what's being done for this thing out is 3, so let's bring 3 over. Minus 3 and minus 3 equaling 2y. Uh, divide both sides by 2. So x minus 3 over 2 equals y, which is going to be g inverse of x. And again, just to make sure that we have this in the right direction, I'm going to take my graphing calculator. I'm going to plug in 2x plus 3 and y1, and then uh, parenthesis x minus 3, close parenthesis, divided by 2. And that's in my y1 and y2. And then I'm going to go down and just plug in y equals x. Taking a look at the graphs, goes up, goes across, and then you got y equals x that comes down, and it looks like that's the reflection line. Get that all cleared out. Now the last thing we want to do is that composition of functions idea. We want to plug f and g of x. What you want to think about for this one is if this were just f of x, you'd have the function f of x. If we said f of 1, you would take 1 and plug it in here. If you had f of 2, you'd plug in 2. It would be just like going through a normal table. And when we put this other function in here, what we're saying is take everything that this function is and just plug that into the x value over here and then simplify everything. 
So we had 5 minus x plus 1 squared. The x plus 1 squared is divided by 3. And we want to plug 2x plus 3 into that. So 5 minus 2x plus 3 plus 1 quantity squared all over 3. And all we're going to do is just simplify this down a little bit. Um, is it necessary for you to multiply everything out? Not really, because you can see inside the parentheses we've got a couple of terms that we can combine. 5 minus 2x plus 4 squared all over 3. It really isn't necessary because the original function had it messed up looking like that. The new function we can have like that also. In other cases, when you don't have a denominator and don't have this 5 out front, you're probably going to be expected to multiply things out a little more and combine more like terms. Uh, for this one, if we wanted to, we could, and I suppose I can just for good measure. 5 minus 2x plus 4 quantity squared. That's going to be 4x squared. I'm going to put parentheses out here, and all this is going to be over 3. Uh, the foiling part, the outside, is going to give me an 8x. Inside is 8x. It's going to give me 16x. And then 4 squared is going to be plus 16. Uh, you can see that 16 and 3 and then the 5, that those would be like terms that I could combine. But, you know, like I said, for this problem, the way it's set up, I did set it up goofy. There's no reason to actually do anything more besides just leave it at this. And that's what's going to equal your f of g of x. And again, the thing you just got to remember is whatever the second function is, or the inside function, is the function that we're going to plug into the other. Here's your f, here's your g. G is inside, F is on the outside, plug G into F.